This is a Stanley number 45. A 45 is recognised by most as combination plane that Stanley made uh, that covers a large variety of previously single purpose planes. There was also a 55 which had a few more features um, and the capability of doing uh, mouldings that are not on a straight across profile. So the 45 looks at mouldings like this uh, with a nice round over, whereas the 55 could take that a step further and have a piece that was offset like this and the skates could be aligned to the height on either side something that the 45 wasn't designed to do. That opened up a whole lot of other opportunities for the 55. Uh, the 55 also had um, a fence on either side and the fence could be tilted so that the 55 could then do uh, chamfer type mouldings as well. The 45 is the more basic, the 55 is the king of the planes. That said, the 45 is very capable and covers a wide variety of, of uh, roundovers, rebates, um, tenons, window sashes, uh, a whole range of different types of activity, mouldings, everything. In fact, it came with two th or three boxes of blades. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is not the 45, but something that is very similar. In fact, so similar that at first glance, you would think it is a 45. Although this one has a lot more filigree and looks a little bit prettier. Other than that, it's almost a 45 couple of slight differences in this particular model and this is an earlier one um, the 45 you will see has this knob at the point top which has a pin that hooks into the back of the blade to hold the blade in its height this plane doesn't and there is another feature of this plane that is a lot different but before we do go into that I'll just highlight that this one is a Stanley 46. The big difference between a Stanley 45 and a Stanley 46 is the cutters and how the cutters fit into the plane. Now this is a 45 cutter and it's a 90 degree angle cutter. Whereas if we jump to a 46 cutter you'll see that the cutting face on it is at an angle now unfortunately this one does have a chip in the end and that has to be ground back and cleaned up that's one of the problems with the 46 is you do have a point there that is hitting the timber first and it's a fragile point it can be knocked can be chipped off broken and to grind these back because they're not on a 90 degree angle um, it is not the easiest thing to do to align them up however on the cross grain they do work very well I'll just take this blade out now this is a quarter inch blade. If I put the 46 aside for a sec, set that down and I'll grab the blade out of the 45 plane which is also a quarter inch. It's just been a little bit difficult there, kind of got stuck in, hasn't been pulled out for a little while. But the blade width is different. The 
thing is when this one cuts on an angle it actually cuts to the same width and it's really hard to display this but it cuts on the same width as the quarter inch even though it's more than a quarter inch and I don't have an inch ruler here but in centimeters we can just get the blade section itself this is eight millimeters across compared to six and a half millimeters across now what happens when you're cutting across the grain maybe cutting a tenon a rebate across on a, on a length maybe the difference between these is that the face is hitting flat on with the timber with this one whereas with the 46 it's hitting the point first and then it kind of although it's driving this way it's also pushing this way so you've got a cut that's a little bit more of a slicing cut rather than a straight through pushing cut and that makes it a little bit easier to cut across the grain and give you a nice clean shaving a slicing cut a little bit more difficult to control on an ordinary plane because you, you, you slice off sideways on the timber because it tries to follow the line of the blade but on this because you've got the fence there in place and you're pushing against it it actually bites in and digs out starting at the point and working towards the back so you get a little bit of a curl off on it that's pretty much the only real difference between the 45 and the 46 is the angled cutters other than that, we have the usual fence setup. We have two skates. The, the body of the plane itself being one skate and the additional skate on the side. Both skates have a knicker that's an adjustable from a screw on the back. You'll find a similar knicker on the main body skate sticking out there screw on the back skate there so you have the ability to cut a nicking line across the fibers of the timber on both skates and that's not unlike the 45 you have the blade sliding in in the same way with the screwed uh, pin biting down on the blade in this model the difference being that you don't have the adjuster screw coming off here to bite into the top of the blade the blade is set firmed up into position and left where it is without any other additional mechanical adjustments you have the usual splitting blade and you have the depth stops so the 46 is for all intensive purposes no more than a 45 with the one difference that it has an angled cutter these are pretty hard to find in good condition even more hard to find with any blades sometimes you'll find them with a single blade still in the unit itself but more often than not you'll find them without any blades at all but to find them with a set of blades is rather difficult with this particular one i've got a few blades and this is kind of a standard set that you would find you've got a range of blades from uh, about an eighth of an inch up and you have a lot and mortise um, or tongue and groove cutter 
um, and that would be the quarter cutter. You have a tongue and groove cutter, which is a quarter slot or quarter tongue. Um, quite bizarre, a little bit hard to set up because of that angle. But once you get it ground down right and sharp, these work extremely well. They become like cutting a hot knife through butter in comparison to the 45. So that's the 46. Not one that you see often. If you do find one at a reasonable price, snap it up. They often go for $600 and above, um, especially if they've got a set of blades with them. The blades themselves, if you find a plane without the blades, the blades will cost you as much as the plane again. Much better to get the blades with the plane as a complete kit, you will get it cheaper. Um, and then be careful you don't lose your blades, look after them. That's the number 46. It's a beautiful little plane. I love it. I don't use it too much as you can probably see. I've got some blades here that I haven't touched, haven't cleaned up there as I received them. Um, I've used it a few times, it does work really well, but the amount of work and attention to detail that's required to get those blades just right on the angle, it's not one that I pull out very often and of course because those blades are so hard to come by, I'm adverse to use them and wear them down. So I make do with the 45s or other tools but a lovely unit to use when I do use it. No matter whether you're a user or a collector, happy hunting.